Welcome to Patrick Parson Workshop. As a new homeowner, you probably don't have a workshop, nor do you need one. In this video, I'm gonna put a kit together that contains all of the tools that you're gonna need for most household jobs and projects. Stick around. You're watching Patrick Parson Workshop. For your basic kit, you're gonna want some work gloves, and I would recommend some good leather, plain work gloves. Make sure they're sized to your hands. These come in different sizes. Go down to a big box store and uh, try them on. Make sure you get the right size that's size for your hands. Your fingers should come all the way to the end or pretty close. I've got short fingers but fat hands. So this is about the best I can do. My fingers come almost to the end, but my palm of my hand really fills this up. Lots of things that you're gonna need these for. This is a safety and comfort item keeps you from getting blisters, keeps you from getting splinters. They do have some grip to them, so you're able to hold things a little bit better than you would be with just your bare hands. If you don't have a workshop, which I think most people starting out will not, I know I didn't, one of these, this tool tote, is a canvas-sided tool tote. Got a nice rubber handle here, rubber uh, grip on this metal handle. Pockets all the way around. This is so handy. You can keep a lot of the tools that we've been talking about right in here. Canvas strap here on the front where you can put different things, screwdrivers and different items that can fit down in there. You can put nails or screws, whatever you're working with on that particular project in these, these end compartments here. Big open space inside here. Really durable, really nice. I would recommend one of these over a toolbox. I'd recommend one of these over a wooden tool tote or even a tool belt. This is something you can put your tools in, set it somewhere in a closet, and then grab it when you're ready to go and you're ready to tackle pretty much any household job. A cordless drill. If there's one thing that I think I use on at least 90% of my projects, it would be a cordless drill. Of course, you can drill with them with a drill bit. You can put a nut driver in here. You can put just a Phillips head in here and drive screws. Usually need to do at least one of those things on your project. So I've got a uh, Bosch and a Porter cable here. One's 18 volt, one's 20 volt. I've had both of these for a long time, probably I'd say seven or eight years. Both of them are still working just fine. These are consumer grade ones, again, down in the links. I'm gonna put my pick for a consumer grade and then a better grade of these cordless drills so you'll get the good and the better there. This is something you definitely need. You're gonna use this on a lot of projects. You want things to be level. When things are not level, they look really, really out of place and shoddy. That's why we use a level when we're building or even putting up pictures or arranging uh, cabinets, putting cabinets on the wall, whatever it may be, level is the key when you're building. It's got a, a little dial here. This has functionality that most levels don't have. Like I can set this to 45 degrees, and then if I'm building something that I want it to be 45 degrees, I can check to make sure that I'm correct with that angle. I'll do it with this bubble right here. As you go on, you're going to want to get other levels, longer levels, different levels, but this is a good one to start out with. I would recommend this. You're going to want to have a caulk gun for projects around the house. Over and over again, I need to use this, whether it be for caulk or liquid nails or anything that you want to squirt out of a tube that looks like that. This is the tool for it. This is a pretty nice one. Again, in the links, I'm going to put a good and a better option. This would be the better option. I'll put a good option in there for you if you're working on a budget. This is one uh, that you can have and use uh, for years and years. Always seem to need these caulk guns. A scraper, this is a one and a quarter inch scraper. It is a very nice size for a lot of different tasks. This is a nice quality one. You use this for Filling in holes uh, with wood putty, use it for scraping things, scraping off old paint, scraping off things that you might have on your workbench. Hopefully you can see that. This does a lot of different things. You always seem to need a scraper. 
A tape measure, you're going to use this on pretty much every project too. One of the things to look for is the standout length, and that's the length that you can stand this out without having the tape fold on you. And if you're working by yourself, you know why you would need to do that. So I can stand this one out. That's six feet right there. So a little over seven feet, I can measure just on my own without having a helper or any support down there on that end, which is nice. This is 35 foot. You may want to also get a smaller one, less than 20 feet, uh, that you can easily put into your pocket very easy. This is pretty good size here. I guess I could put this in my pocket, but it wouldn't, wouldn't be comfortable. It's got a clip, clip on your belt, clip on your tool pouch or bag. Make sure you have a good tape measure. A good steel shaft general purpose hammer with the rubberized grip down here that makes it comfortable to put in your hand. Anywhere between 15 and 20 ounces, something that's easy for you to handle. It's a manageable length. This is a good hammer to get started with because it's got the steel shaft here. If you do miss when you're hammering, it's not going to mess up the neck of your hammer there like it would with a wood or fiberglass hammer. Definitely a must. Of course, you can pull nails, you can drive nails, you can uh, do demolition, uh, knock, knock things out when you're doing some renovations. Lots of uses for this. Definitely need a good hammer. You're going to need some pliers. If you're only going to have one pair of pliers to start out with, I would recommend these channel lock or slip joint pliers. So you can grab things of different sizes by slipping the joint here. You can turn bolts with these, you can pull things uh, with it. Lots of uses for this. You'll find yourself using this on all kinds of different tasks inside, outside your house, on your car. This is going to come in very handy. There's all kinds of different utility knives out there. Here's a couple examples. I'll show you this one. It flips out like a pocket knife, right? And it has the standard razor blades that fit in there, all right? So you can pull those in and out that way, pretty easy. It doesn't have any onboard blade storage. Be nice if it did. It does have some other things here. It's kind of like a multi-tool. This is one of my favorites here, the Fiskars Pro. You really know when you're putting the blade out and bringing the blade back because you have to press this kind of in and up. I really like that. It's got a place to put your thumb here. It's real comfortable in the hand to get to your blades. Right, there's your blade. Here's where extra blades would go. I don't have any extra blades in there, but they would be right there. Pull them out, put them in here. Pretty easy. There's a lot of these utility knives that have onboard blade storage. If you're going through a lot of them, that may be important to you. If it doesn't take up any extra room and they're no heavier or bulkier, you might as well get the onboard blade storage, I think. And you would use this for cutting carpet, cutting uh, wires, Lots of different things uh, where you need a razor blade to make a nice exact cut. I would recommend getting a screwdriver kit that has all of your standard bits like Phillips, flathead, all of your driver bits, and then even some uh, nut driving attachments. This is very handy all-in-one kit if you're going to have just one screwdriver. I think a type like this is the one to have. A good stud finder, and this one works pretty well. It's a Zircon One Step Stud Sensor 65. And it's got a little display there that you can see when you're coming over the studs when you've gotten to the middle of it. It's very clear in that display, and it also lets out a tone that tells you when you're in the center of the stud. If you're hanging things on the wall where you need that strength and support of anchoring it into a stud in your wall, this is very important. I use this a lot something great to have. Safety equipment, your hearing protection and your safety glasses. These, uh, the hearing protection here is pretty basic, nothing special to talk about there. The safety glasses, these are anti-fog and they offer a lot of protection for your eyes. They wrap around there so that if you're grinding metal or anything like that, there's a lot less of a chance that it's going to get up in your eye then those safety glasses, the standard ones that you always see that seems like there's a lot of space and air between the glasses and, and your face, which doesn't make me feel very safe. So these are nice. They're also bifocals. They're reader safety glasses. So that bottom little strip gives you a little bit of magnification there. I think it's one and a half times, which really helps if you're working with things that are small. 
to be able to see, which also makes things safer, right? The better you can see little small things, the, the safer that you're gonna be. When you know what your hands and blades and chisels and things are doing, you're gonna be a lot safer. So I would recommend these. A cordless circle saw, this is part of that 20 volt family from Porter Cable. Got a lot of these tools that use these same batteries. I would definitely recommend that to you. Pick out one family of tools with one common voltage so you can exchange the batteries across all of your cordless power tools. So this one comes in handy for so many tasks, whether you're building something outside, a doghouse, a fence, cutting some studs to length, to build walls inside, so many things this is going to come in handy, even demo work. I love the cordless circle saw. It is so much nicer than having a cord. I'll leave a link to a good corded option down in the description and also to a good cordless option. You want to have a good drill bit and driver set for your cordless drill. Drill bits of different sizes, different types of drivers. They come in a nice set, nice little case. I've had a few of those. I've taken the bits and drivers out and put them different places so I don't have one to show you. I'll have some links to some good sets down in the description of this video. A good 8 inch crescent wrench. This is a cobalt 7 16 inch is very good to have for putting things together, removing nuts. Pretty self-explanatory. If you're going to have just one, I would get the uh, eight inch crescent wrench. I think we got a nice little kit here for the homeowner to tackle most projects that you're going to come up against. I was able to fit everything that we talked about with the exception of the cordless circle saw into this tool tote. And there's still a lot of room in here. There's a lot of other things that you can fit in here. These things are really handy. If there's anything I missed or anything you think I included that doesn't belong in a new homeowner kit, let me know that in the comments. If you like the video, if you got something out of it, leave me a thumbs up and I'll see you on the next video.